Hello and welcome to Bay College's video lectures for Math 095. We're going to look at section 7.1, which introduces exponents and scientific notation. This is going to be broken into two videos. Part one, we're going to concentrate on the rules of exponents. And then part two, we'll sum up our rules of exponents and introduce scientific notation. Now, the first thing we're going to do is review um, something that we've been familiar with. We've, we've worked with uh, squares and cubes as exponents before. And we just have to recall some of the things we have to be careful of. And that's parentheses. We have to know what we're actually raising to some power, to some exponent. If we look at this example, it says negative 3, the quantity, is squared. And if we recall, if we square a negative, we have two negatives. An even number of negatives will give me a positive value, because we have a negative 3 times a negative 3. That's what it means to square. And negative 3 times negative 3 is 9. So this value would equal 9. I'll just write it up there. Now here, it looks similar, negative 3 squared. But the, when we have a power, it only applies to what it's adjacent to if there's no grouping symbols. The grouping symbols group these together. So when I look at this, it says a negative 3 times 3. So we would say 3 times 3 is 9, a negative 9. So we have to be careful and watch that when, it, when we're dealing with exponents. Now, if we look at this example, we have negative 2 cubed. Well, if we recall, an odd number of negatives will result in a negative value. If I only have one negative, a negative times a positive would be negative. Well, if I have a negative times a negative times a negative, that's going to be a negative, because we have an odd number of negatives. So that's one shortcut to kind of evaluate our signs. How many negative values are we raising to what power? Is it even to give me a positive value, or is it odd to give me a negative value. And if we multiply this out, we get negative 8. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. Positive 4 times a negative 2 is a negative 8. Or we can just assess it. It's going to be negative 2 times 2 times 2, negative 8. Same thing. There's no grouping symbols, so the power is only applied to what it's adjacent to. So this would be a negative 2 times 2 times 2. And when we do that, we get a negative 8. Now notice, here they were the same, but here they were different. This was 9. This was negative 9. This is negative 8. This is also negative 8. And it's because of that even and odd difference. This says we have an odd number of negatives. Here we only have 1. Well, 1 is also an odd number of negatives. So both of our answers were negative in that case. So let's look at exactly what is exponents. <clears throat> Well, an exponent tells us to multiply something repeatedly. So this is our base, and this is our exponent. We also call it the power. It just says repeatedly multiply the base this many factors of that base. So if we have x squared, it's saying x times x. Or if we have negative 3 squared, it's saying negative 3 times negative 3. Here we have x to the first. Well, that just says I want one factor of x. Now, before we do this one, let's jump down to this here. Now, if we recall, if multiplication and division, they're equal and reciprocal operations, equal and opposite. One can undo the other. Well, when we have exponents with positive uh, values, what we can do is just repeatedly multiply. When we have a negative value, it means to repeatedly divide by this factor. So positives in exponents mean to multiply. Negatives mean to divide. So if I look at this, it says divide by a factor of 1. And another way to look at it is <coughs> to call it a reciprocal. Negative exponents means reciprocal. And we'll look at that as a rule shortly. So this one here would be 1 over x times x. I'm dividing repeatedly by x. Two factors of x will be divided. Uh, used as a, the divisor. And we see negative. We just take the reciprocal 1 over x and then square it. So <clears throat> what about this one? I kind of skipped this one, and I did it for a reason. If we have something to the 0 power, it says, well, 
we want to do something with only factors of x so that we have no more factors of x remaining. Well, positive values told, it, told me to repeatedly multiply, and negative values told me to repeatedly divide. Well, is 0 positive or negative? Well, it's neither, so we actually have to treat it as both. If it's positive and I have a factor of x just like this, and I treat it as negative, I have a factor of x in a denominator or a reciprocal, we know that anything divided by itself is 1. And as we explore these rules of exponents, we'll find that anything to the 0 power is 1, as long as x isn't 0 because anything divided by itself is always 1. So we're not multiplying. We're not dividing. We're actually doing both simultaneously because 0 is neither positive or negative. So let's explore the first rule, which we call negative exponent rule. If we have a base raised to a power that's negative, it does not change the sign of the value necessarily. That's something different, the even and odd numbers. We just look at it and say, oh, the negative sign in an exponent means to take its reciprocal 1 over that value. So we just basically bring this value, a to the n, to the denominator. And by doing that, we eliminate that negative sign. We divide by this factor n times. So let's take a look at some examples here. We have y to the negative ninth. Well, using our negative exponent rule, I can take its reciprocal 1 over y to the ninth power. Basically, we get rid of that negative by bringing it under a division bar, 1 over y to the ninth. It's reciprocal. If we look at this example and we keep in mind that there's no parentheses, so this power only applies to what it's adjacent to. So here, I would say, well, I'd have to have 1 over y to the ninth, just like I did here, but it's times x. Well, if this is 1 over this value times x, 1 times x, this does not apply to the x. It's not in parentheses. It only applies to what it's adjacent to. So we get x over y to the ninth. If we look at this example, we have 5 to the negative second. Well, that's 1 over. 5 squared. That negative just says bring it to a denominator. And now I can actually do the math. 5 squared is 5 times 5. 5 times 5 is 25. What if we have a fraction and we're raising it to a negative power? Well, the reciprocal rule says take its reciprocal. The reciprocal of 1 third would be 3. And because I took its reciprocal, I don't need it to be negative anymore. Just like when I took the reciprocal of this, it wasn't negative anymore. So I take its reciprocal, and now I have 3 squared. And I know 3 times 3 is 9. Why don't you try this example for yourself? It's very similar to ones we've seen before. The only difference is it's negative. So take its reciprocal and simplify that. Watch that sign. It is in those parentheses. I'm going to do this one for you here. We have 2x. It's in those parentheses. It means to multiply this whole thing by itself three times. But since it's negative, and I'm going to actually write it out. I'll do it this way. 1 over, taking its reciprocal, 2x to the third. And now I can do this. Well, to do this, I have to multiply 1 over 2x times 2x times 2x. I need three factors of everything in those parentheses. And now when I multiply it, I get 1 over 2 times 2 times 2. I can deal with the numbers separately than the variable. 2 times 2 times 2 is 8. And x times x times x is three factors of x. I get 8x cubed in the denominator. That's what that negative said. Bring it to a denominator. Bring it under a fraction bar. 1 over 8x cubed. All right, what if we have a negative exponent already in the denominator? Well, if we take its reciprocal 1 over the reciprocal of this 1 over x squared, so if we think about it as x to the negative second, we'd get 1 over x to the second. But since it's already uh, in a denominator, if we wrote it like this, we have a complex fraction. We have a value divided by a fraction. And we should know that if we divide by a fraction, OK, 
Because this and this mean the same thing. One is divided by this value. One is divided by that value. When we divide by a fraction, we multiply by its reciprocal. Well, 1 times this value gives me x squared. So what we can think of is if we have, it's a variation of the rule we just covered, 1 over a to the negative n, we can take its reciprocal and change the sign. So if we have a negative in the denominator, we can bring it to a numerator. And if we think about it, it would be over 1, which isn't necessary. Anything divided by 1 is its value. These are actually the same rule. If the negative is here, I take its reciprocal, move it to a denominator. If it's already in a denominator, move it to the numerator. That's what a reciprocal is all about. All right. Let's move to the next rule, which is called the product rule. The product rule is if we have two values that are being multiplied that have the same base, we can add their powers. a to the m times a to the n is a to the m plus n. Why does that work? Well, let's write this out in an expanded form. If we look at this example, I have x to the fourth times x squared. The first thing I identified, they're both x's. That's my base. So I have x to the fourth is just four factors of x, x times x times x times x, times x squared, which is just x times x, two factors of x. Now, if I think about it, I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 factors of x, x to the sixth power, multiplied by itself six times. Now, this was a long and arduous way to do this. And this rule will make it a shortcut. If they have the same base, 4 plus 2 is 6. So we can see that it comes to the same answer. It is the same result. So I want you to try this one on your own. You can write it out in expanded form or use the rule. Add the exponents if their bases are the same. I'm going to do this example for you because it's a little more complex. Now, <clears throat> since we have several variables and numbers, we can treat them separately. The first thing I'm going to do is the numbers. It says this quantity times that quantity. Well, let's deal with the numbers first. Negative 4 times 2. Well, I know that's negative 8. x cubed and x squared, they are just like this. x to the fourth, x second. Well, it's, the only difference is the powers. x cubed is being multiplied by a term that contains an x squared. So I can say x cubed times x squared is x to the 3 plus 2, which is x to the fifth. And then I have y times y. Now, we notice there's no exponent here. But we have to remember, if there's no exponent, we have to assume there's at least one of them. So its exponent is 1. 1y one times 1y is y squared. 1 plus 1 is 2. y times y is y squared. So this is what we'd get from that. So just break it apart, deal with the numbers, and then deal with each individual variable. All right, the next rule is the power rule. What if I have a value raised to a power, and that quantity is being raised to a power? Well, I can multiply those values together. And let's see that in expanded form here. If I have x to the fourth squared, I'm taking x to the fourth times x to the fourth, because I need to square what's in those parentheses. And if I do that, now I can see, oh, it's just like the last rule. It's a product rule. They have the same basis. I can add them. 4 plus 4 is 8. Well, one way to skip having to use this rule and write it out this way is to say, well, 4 times 2 is also 8. That's our power rule. We multiply exponents when we have a power raised to a power. We can just multiply them. m times n, 4 times 2 gives us that result. So why don't you try it on this one and see what you get? Write it out in expanded form so you can see it. and then. Multiply those together, and that's the shortcut. All right, let's look at another rule here. It's called the power of a product rule. Well, what if we have a mathematical operation being done here, multiplication, and that's being raised to a power? Well, if I just had a raised to the m, I would say, well, that's a to the m. If I just had b to the m, I would just have b to the m. But since it's a product, I have to distribute this to their powers. So if I do that, I get a to the m times b to the m. It's just distributing this to each power. It's 
very similar to this one. We multiply this to the power. Well, here we distribute it to a power because it's multiplication. Let's look at this example here. We have 4xy to the sixth. That quantity is being squared and multiplied by 2. We always have to be aware of order of operations. Do what's in parentheses, then do exponents before you do multiplication. So I have to deal with this before I can do that multiplication. So <clears throat> what I'm going to do is just take it one piece at a time. Everything in these parentheses are being squared. So 4 squared is 8. x squared, I have to distribute this to all these values, the, the number as well, as well as the x, as well as the y, just like we did here. So x squared, or 2 times 1 of these x, would be 2. And then y to the 6 squared would be 2 times 6, y to the 12th. Now I can simplify it further because I've dealt with that exponent. Now I can do the multiplication. Well, 2 times 8 is 16, x squared, y to the 12th. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Uh, if not, back the video up, watch it again if you need to, or you know, find another resource. All right, <clears throat> I'm going to leave this one for you to try so that you can get that practice that you need. All right, now we've seen several rules now. Well, now we're going to look at the quotient rule. And the quotient rule is very similar to the product rule. If I have the same bases and I'm multiplying, I add them. Well, here I have the same bases. But I'm dividing. That's an opposite operation, opposite than multiplication. Well, if you notice, the rule says I can subtract the values. Well, subtraction is the opposite of operation, just like division is the opposite of multiplication. So the quotient rule and the product rule are very similar. The only difference is opposite operations. So if I have two bases that are being divided, I can just subtract the top minus the bottom. And one thing to keep in mind, it's always the top value minus the bottom value. And when we do subtraction, we've got to be careful with our signs. So let's look at this example. Now, in the previous ones, we dealt with the numbers first, if we could. And then we dealt with the exponents. Well, let's do that here. We have 2. What's the coefficient in the bottom? Well, it's division. 2 over 1 is just 2. So I'm just going to write it right there, 2. Now, the quotient rule, I look at my x's. I have 2 on top and 1 on the bottom. I can use the quotient rule, the top minus the bottom. 2 minus 1 is just 1. x to the first is just x. And then here I have y to the fifth and y to the fourth. The y to the fourth in the denominator, I can subtract it using my rule. 5 of these minus 4 of those leaves me with just 1 of those. Now, if I wrote this out in expanded form, and let's just do that for a moment. 2 times x times x, that's my x squared, times y to the fifth, y, five factors of y over x times four factors of y. And if we recall what we looked at in the very, one of the very first examples, anything divided by itself is 1. Well, I can subtract because they reduce to 1. One of these x's will reduce one of those. 2 minus 1 is 1. So if I subtract 1, I have 1x remaining. And that's what I have there. Here, if I expand out the y's, I have 5 on top and 4 on the bottom. Well, each y will reduce another y by to 1. So we have y reducing to 1. So we have four 1's here, essentially. Well, 5 minus 4 is 1y. 1y does not cancel because there's no other y to cancel it. All right, so this one here, this is for you to try. This is your example. Remember your order of operations. Work within the parentheses using these rules. Then do your multiplication. All right, and finally, one thing I concentrated on when I showed you the first example of all those x's being squared or to a negative exponent, we talked about the 0 exponent. Anything to the 0 power is 1, as long as that value isn't 0. Because essentially, if this is a over a, like we saw in the x over x, anything divided by itself is 1, except when it's 0, because we can't divide by 0. This is a powerful rule. Because if we see anything to the 0 power to be 1, with the exception of 0, we can look at at something like this and say, hey, this is kind of intimidating at first. I have all these values in parentheses. 
Ah, but it's raised to the 0 power. Anything to the 0 power is 1. And if you think about it, if I say, well, 4 to the 0 power is the same as 4 over 4, x over x, y squared over y squared, using that quotient rule, everything would reduce to 1. So take a look at this one. Even though it's addition, take each of these terms separately and figure out what that answer is going to be. Because we can use that 0 rule to simplify this expression. All right, <clears throat> let's look at a few examples here where we can apply uh, our rules of exponents. Because you're going to be given these for practice, and uh, you have to know when to apply all these different rules that you just saw. So here, I say, OK, well, I see a negative exponent. So I want to deal with that. How do I get rid of that next negative exponent? I take its reciprocal. But it's already involved in a fraction. So I don't want to start a complex fraction. So I can just move it to a denominator. It's currently in a numerator. Move it to the denominator. And if I do that, move this down here, I get an x squared in the denominator. And notice the sign change because I'm taking its reciprocal. And if we look at that, there's no more math I can do. All I had to apply was that negative exponent rule to get our simplified expression. Now here, there's, it looks like a lot going on. But I'm going to use order of operations. Deal with what's in parentheses. Well, I can't really simplify anything there. Move on to exponents. What's in this parentheses is raised to a power. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the power of a product rule. And I'm going to distribute it to these powers. And if I do that, negative 3 times negative 2 would be a to the 6. Negative 3 times a positive 2 would be b to the negative 6. And then I just have my denominator a. B, oh, we're getting a little messy here, a, b to the negative second. Now, I can do one of two things here. I can say, well, I could use my quotient rule, 6 minus 1, because they have the same base. And I could use my quotient rule here as well. But I'm going to do it a little bit different. I want to get rid of this negative exponent on top. I can move that to the bottom. And if I do that, I'm going to write it down here. a to the 6, I'm going to take the b to the 6 and move it to the bottom a, b to the negative second, b to the sixth. When I bring it to the bottom, I change its sign. That's the reciprocal rule. And now, if I look at this, these b's are both in the bottom. I can actually use the product rule here. And that's why I decided to do it this way, so I could do the product rule. Well, <clears throat> the product rule says add these two values. Negative 2 plus 6 is a positive 4. So I'd have a to the sixth over a times b to the fourth. By using that product rule, now it's positive, And I don't have to deal with it. Now I can just say 6 minus 1. I get a to the fifth over b to the fourth. This is the simplified answer. Now, <clears throat> when you do enough of these and through practice, you're going to actually see shortcuts. We could have immediately went to the quotient rule instead of doing the reciprocal rule. What's nice about the rules of exponents, as long as you use them properly, you can use them in any order because they're doing essentially the same operation. So let me clean this up. And we're going to do this problem again. Order of operations, deal with those parentheses. I can get rid of them by that distribution. a to the sixth, b to the negative sixth over a, b to the negative second. I'm going to just use the quotient rule here, 6 minus 1 is going to leave me with a to the fifth. And negative 6 minus a negative 2. This is where we might get in trouble because of all these different signs. Negative 6 minus a negative 2. Well, if I minus a negative 2, I'm actually going to add 2. Negative 6 plus 2 is negative 4. So I'd have b to the negative fourth. Now, there's still an additional step here because I don't want to have negative exponents. I have to take its reciprocal. And the reciprocal would be 1 over b to the fourth times a to the fifth. I can just move this to a denominator now, a to the fifth on top because it's positive. b to the negative fourth goes in the bottom. And if we look at this, it was the same answer we had last time. So you can approach them any way you like. All right, <clears throat> this one here, we just have to be careful with our variables. So let's use the quotient rule here. 4 minus 5, 
for the values that have the same base, my x's. 4 minus 5 is a negative 1, x to the negative first. Here we have y to the fifth. 5 minus y to the first, 5 minus 1, is y to the fourth. But now that I've used the quotient rule, this is negative 1. So I have to take its reciprocal, y to the fourth over x to the first, which is just x. All right, so at this point, I'm going to leave this example for you to do. Try this one out yourself. Apply those rules. If you want to do it one way or another, that's OK, as long as you check your work. Maybe you want to try different strategies and apply different rules. So give it a try. This has been 7.1 Part 1. Thank you for watching.